common situation a lot of machinists are faced with when they start and that's how am I gonna machine a odd shaped part in a lathe or any time that you want to use a four jaw chuck these principles are gonna apply. So as you can see here we've got a rectangular part and we've installed a bevel on the inside. Now what we're gonna do to change out to the next parts the steps are going to be about the same as when you're starting fresh. So to begin, when you're changing out a part like this, you only want to loosen as many jaws as it takes to get the part out. So I've created some space here, that should be loose now, and I'm going to loosen one more jaw, and I'm not going to rotate the chuck then so I know which one's moved. And the only thing that would be different if you were starting fresh would be that you would preset these parts to your dimension. So you would grab a tape measure or a scale and you're going to take your part and you're going to run it in until these jaws are roughly equal distances in relationship to one another as close as you can get it. That's going to prevent a lot of going back and forth with an indicator but let's just uh, make sure this is all clean before we start placing the next part. I have a spacing ring here because I need room to actually machine my bevel and I'm actually dropping in here with a grooving tool to do the work on the backside so there's no burr. So we're gonna place our spacing ring and we're gonna grab our part. As you can see here, the part is rectangular. It's six and a half inches tall and five and a half inches wide and we've got the convenience of a circle on the inside. The steps are gonna be a little different which I'll show you what to do if you don't have a round feature which makes indicating easier. So, first thing I'm gonna do, place my part. If I can get it in here. Like I said, you really don't wanna move your jaws any more than you have to. So I'm trying to get my spacing ring in place. Might have to rotate this a little bit. There we go. Had to go out just a little bit more. Now this spacing ring is not the perfect size for what I'm trying to do here, but I just need to hold the part against square to begin with. And I'm going to just snug down the two that I loosened first. As you can see, as I snug this, my spacing ring is becoming loose, so we're going to have to address that throughout. I want to apply fairly good pressure to these to start, so I know exactly where the part's actually going to end up. So I've snugged that down pretty securely. And now, what I want to do before I begin is now that there's a fair bit of pressure applied, I want to make sure that ring is still in the correct place. So I'm going to give this a tap. Well, Alright, that's snug enough that the part is now running true on its axis. That's very important. Almost always when you start indicating in a four jaw chuck, you want to go on the face first and make sure everything's running true. So now the spacing ring's good, we know the part's running true with the chuck as far as the face goes, there's no run out side to side. We're going to place our indicator, go into our jog mode on our machine, and we're going to put it on the bottom. I like to tighten the high points, so we're going to drop this in, and this is a water jet blank, so we're going to actually go on the smoother side where there's less curve for indicating and then what we're going to do we can just jog up and down on our x-axis you want to make sure that your indicator stylus is as close to parallel with the part as possible or you can get what's called cosine error but that's for another video it's another topic so let's get you in here a little closer let's actually move the base that you're filming on You see I've just got a Noga base stuck fast to the turret here and we'll actually bring this in and get a better view of what's going on. I'm going to need to get enough of the chuck so you can see what's happening too. Alright, this is going to be difficult around a camera, but I can usually indicate even an odd shaped part like this in less than a minute. So I'm jogging up an X and if you've just freshly installed your part chances are your travel on your indicator will not be sufficient unless you have say a hundred thousandths or more unless you're very good at pre-placing your jaws so 
if you ha don't have enough indicator travel, you're just basically looking for any gap here, and you're just gonna keep moving your part, as you're gonna see here in a second, until it runs as concentric as possible before you even apply your indicator. So let's apply our indicator. You see the needle starting to move, and let's look for the highest point. Okay, looks like our highest jaw is right here. So let's apply some more travel to our indicator. And we can actually take that to a nice even number. This is actually upside down as you're looking at. Let's spin it just to make your life a little easier to see. So as you can see here, we're on zero. That's our highest number. And our lowest number is roughly 10, which I would say is this jaw. Sometimes you can have a situation where the lowest point is actually between two jaws, in which case you're gonna to need to adjust both of these the same amount relative to one another. But there's our low point, here's our high point, right? So now we're gonna take the chuck and we're gonna tighten our highs. So if that low point was 10, we wanna go halfway, we wanna to go to the five. And if this will not move, we're gonna to have to loosen the opposing jaw that's on the bottom. There we've gone to the five. Now, as we rotate this, you gotta bear in mind this is a water jet blank, so things are not going to be perfect with it. And after one adjustment there, you can see we are spinning within thousands, which is very good for a water jet blank. Now the final step here is you have to ensure that your jaws are all tight. So come to each jaw, we see we're a little different there, apply a little pressure, come to the next jaw. This is a little bit easier when you have a part that's actually true on the inside to see perfect run out. It, 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 we're just not going to be able to get perfection with a rough blank like this. The surface finish and the uh, roundness of the part just will not allow it. So as we look at that, we're within a few thousandths. This is a five-tenth indicator. Great. Now, what we need to do next, since we know that that spacing ring was actually not tight, is we need to tap. What we need to do here, just to ensure this spacing ring doesn't move around while we're machining, I'm going to try to place it roughly in the center of the travel and then tap on the face of the part until I know that it's seated well. And it looks like I'm not quite there. It's probably not going to want to move too easy for me. But once you have everything seated with your spacing or whatever you're trying to do, you have to make sure this face is still running true. As I look at this, it appears to be, I would put an indicator on here if it's a part that matters. But the final thing then is we're going to put our indicator back on and we're going to check and make sure any movement we did on the face has not actually moved the part on X. So as we're looking here, we'll apply some travel to the indicator and if anything is moved here you're gonna to have to go back and forth between the face and your movement on X so that was a little too easy right well things are not always so easy right now my ring is not exactly where I would like it to be I'd like it to move up a little bit so in order to get that to happen I'm gonna loosen one jaw and that's gonna throw everything out of whack so as I move this up now to where I know it's seated and we tighten this down, chances are we're not going to have perfect run out anymore. I'm spotting my ring, making sure it's contacting everywhere on the face that it's supposed to be, and let's tap this guy back in. Good. And have we moved? We're back on the inside and it looks like we're still as good as we had gotten it initially. Now 
Here's a step that you will likely have to do at some point in your career. And that is to go on a surface that is not regular, like the inside. And what you're going to do then is you're going to make sure you have enough travel that when you place your indicator, you can get a reading here and clear all your jaws. And let's move the camera up some. This can be tricky. What you're going to do here is you're going to actually jog onto the part and hopefully you are within enough of your travel range that you're going to sweep back and forth until you find your lowest point. And as you can see here, I'm just going to rotate this a little bit so you can see it. It's going to mess up our actual reading, but make it a little easier for you to see. Let's move the camera a little bit here. Our lowest point on the outside looks like it's around six or seven, seven-ish, right? Then you're going to jog off the part and then you're going to actually rotate the part 180 degrees and you're going to jog back on the part and if you do not get the same reading then you know that you are not actually centered. You see we're right on about six so that's very good for what we're doing here. With a water jet blank like this, we know the inside is running true to the outside very well. It's very close. It's about a thousand, best as I can tell. But we need to check the other two sides as well. So let's move our indicator. And all of this is something that you will get very fast at doing the more you do it, just like anything machining. We all acquire these skills over time. Nobody's born a perfect machinist, I can tell you that much. So we're finding our lowest point. It looks like our lowest point is 11. We're gonna jog off. Remember that number, 11. And we're gonna jog onto the other side. And find that lowest point and Looks like I just bumped my indicator a little hard when I came on there. We're at about six and a half. So remember six and a half and don't do what I just did. Come back to the other side and make sure we're closer to the middle. This is an old indicator, so it's not perfect. All right. And it looks like we're on about 10. So we're, we are off. We are on six on the other side, about four. So overall, we're within about two thousandths to the center. Not too bad. It's fine for a water jet blank, but when you're doing parts like this, this is something you need to get really fast at doing. And if you've got a part that you need to get to move substantially, and you've got your indicator placed and you find your high point, you're going to be loosening the low. If you can't get it to move by tightening the high, loosen the low, tighten the high, Go half the distance like we showed in the beginning and you'll be there.